हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आवर चैनल के एस एस गुरुकुल टूडे वी डिस्कस द चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास इलेवन बायोलॉजी व्हाट इज लिविंग बिफोर दैट इफ यू हैव नॉट येट सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू गेट न्यू वीडियो अपडेट्स व्हाट इज लिविंग फर्स्ट लेट अस नो व्हाट लिविंग वर्ल्ड इज Living world refers to the world of living organism. Living, that is having life, not dead. Living means performing all the functions or manifesting all the characteristic feature of a living organism. Now, what are the characteristics of a living organism? They are growth, reproduction, metabolism. cellular organization and consciousness let's discuss the first characteristics that is growth growth of a organism takes place in two ways one by increase in cell number another by increase in mass however increase in mass is not a defining property of living organism because non living things like mountains sand mountains and boulders also grow only the living organism grow from inside while the non living grow from outside that is by accumulation of materials on their surface thus if we use increase in mass to define the living form we have to make it conditional that is it must grow from inside both unicellular as well as multicellular organisms grow by cell division cell division in plants occur continuously throughout the whole of their life but cell division in animals occurs up to a certain age limit However in case of loss of cells for example by injury cell division takes place in that tissue irrespective of the age of the organism to replace the lost cells and repair the tissues through culture in vitro by culture media growth of microorganisms can be observed outside the body Now come to the second characteristics that is reproduction. Unicellular organisms like bacteria, unicellular algae or amoeba reproduce by a process called fission. In which cell division produces new organisms by increasing the numbers of cell. thus the unicellular organisms growth and reproduction are synonymous but in multicellular organisms growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive that is these two processes cannot take place simultaneously reproduction is the process by which an organism develops its progeny more or less similar to it generally by reproduction we mean sexual reproduction however most unicellular and some of the multicellular organisms reproduce by asexual means also some of the methods of asexual reproduction are multiplication by producing asexual spores this method of reproduction is seen in fungi next is budding it is seen in lower organisms like yeast and hydra regeneration in which the fragmented parts become new organisms by regenerating the lost parts of the body is seen in planaria or flatworm fragmentation method of asexual reproduction is seen in fungi filamentous algae and the protonema of mosses how 
However, there are many organisms those do not reproduce. They are infertile. For example, sterile worker bees and ants. Infertile human being. Hines and bulls. Hines are the offsprings of male horse Stalin and the female donkey Zeni. Whereas the moles are the offsprings of female horse mare and male donkey Shek. Horses have chromosome number 64 and the donkeys have 62. But the hines and moles have an odd chromosome number that is 63. Thus they cannot reproduce. Thus reproduction cannot be defining feature of a living organism. Now come to the third characteristic of a living organism that is metabolism. These are the sum total of various biochemical reactions inside our body by which various chemicals are formed and also changed into various biomolecules. According to Tavis Dictionary, metabolism is all of the energy and material transformation that occur within the living cells. It includes two fundamental processes that is anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is constructive phase of metabolism in which inorganic chemicals are converted into cell products or parts of the living cells. Catabolism is destructive phase of metabolism in which complex substances are converted into simplest ones, often with release of energy or ATP. All the plants, animals, fungi, microbes, whether they are unicellular or multicellular, exhibit metabolic reaction. Whereas non-living things do not exhibit metabolic reaction. Isolated metabolic reaction can be performed by vitro, that is outside the body. For example, in test tube. However, they are neither living nor non-living things. Those are living reactions. Hence, metabolism is a defining feature of a living organism. Now, the fourth characteristics. That is cellular organization. Cellular organization refers to the components of the cell or the cell organelles which are made up of lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, etc. Their arrangement inside the cell, their function inside the cell which is very much organized. Each and every cell organelle has their specific function. The cellular organization is responsible for all the function of the cell like metabolism, cellular respiration and transportation etc. Properties of tissues are not present in constituent cells but result from the interaction between them. Cellular organization is not seen in dead cells. Thus, cellular organization is the defining feature of a living organism. Come to the fifth characteristics that is consciousness. It is the ability of the organism to sense its surroundings or environment and react accordingly. In other way, it is the ability of sense perception to receive the external stimuli which can be physical, chemical or biological and react to them. It is seen in all organisms from prokaryotes to eukaryotes and unicellular to multicellular organisms. This property makes all organisms conscious or aware about their surroundings. For 
example in both plants and animals reproduction in seasonal breeders is affected by photoperiod that is the length of day and night it is because they can sense the changes in the surroundings however human being is the only organism who along with being awareness of its surroundings also is conscious of his self this is called self consciousness hence consciousness is a defining feature of a living organism let us discuss about coma patients those are brain dead and are on artificial life support like iv or parenteral nutrition ventilators etc their respiration and circulation depends entirely on these artificial supports there is no consciousness of the surrounding or self in this way they can be considered dead however metabolism in individual cells is continuing in these patients thus in this respect they can be considered as living so in total we can say a coma patient with brain stem death can neither be considered dead nor living such person is living dead summary of this topic growth is not a defining feature of living organisms h it can also be seen in non living things reproduction is not a defining feature of living organisms h there are many living organisms that do not reproduce there are three defining features of living organisms that is metabolism cellular organization and consciousness coma patients who are brain dead can neither be considered as living nor dead they are living dead properties of tissues are not present in constituent cells but result from the interaction between them human being is the only organism who possesses self consciousness this was all about this topic feel free to subscribe like share and comment your valuable views thank you